I work in the area of artificial intelligence, and very recently somebody said to me, artificial intelligence is the field which concerns itself with very, 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 very hard problems. And I thought to myself, well, how smarmy that is, you know? <laughs> I mean, how unctuous, how unfair that remark is, because every one of you works in a field that has very, very, very hard problems to solve, whether it's physics or chemistry, anthropology, political science. No matter what it is, they're very, very hard problems to solve. So it certainly isn't unique to artificial intelligence. That person did not understand what artificial intelligence is about. Artificial intelligence is about building machines or engines that are general purpose problem solvers with more or less large domains of application. They can be applied to medical imaging, they can be applied to art, they can be applied to weapon systems, they can be applied to theater, they can be applied to games and entertainment and iPhones and da 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 everything. And of course, if you take artificial away from it, then they have a very large application domain and they are called human beings. And we are probably the most widely spread application device on this planet. My objective okay. in artificial intelligence for my entire 40-year career has been to build a completely robust personal artificial intelligence whose cognitive capabilities are on a par with us intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, in every way. Mara is the name of that being that does not exist yet, that is on a same par with us, that we haven't developed yet, but we're well on our way to, and I would like to tell you the story of that trip. We begin with a graph, we scientists love graphs. And on this graph, I'm going to show you how much memory we know is devoted to the adult human brain. It's called 100 terabytes, but if you like other numbers, it's 10 to the 15th bits, okay? And that's what you've got as the capacity of your mind, everybody's brain, well, most of you anyway, in this, in this room, okay? And in 1976, when I put this chart together, I looked back at the, at the memory capacities that had existed so far in computers, and I regressed that line to show how it had grown so far. And then I took the bull by the horns, and I said, okay, we're going to project into the future, and... Here's what happened over the years with my personal computers. That's an actual plot. Now, you say, my God, it makes a straight line. Be, 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 be careful, this is logarithmic. So that's pretty good, huh? Because if you draw that line through it, you notice that they fit pretty well. Um, I actually got extended that line, and you can see the last computer which the Department of Defense bought for me just a little while ago there, next to now, right? And it all fits really pretty well so that I can place some dependency on doing some extrapolation into the future. Now, you might say, well, okay, uh, Peter, we're, we're, we're not up to the adult human brain. Where are we? Yeah, we, we're, we're at the shrew right now. The shrew is the smallest mammal on the surface of this planet. It has an IQ of 0.1. <laughs> but we're going to come back to this because in the meantime, we've had to work with this limited resource. I've always known that we were going to be resource limited. I've always known that because 100 terabytes devoted to a single core processor if we were to put that all together in a small enough area so that we could run it, it would be liquid and hot and not work, okay? We can't do that yet, but we will, perhaps. So in the meantime, about 1990, I got a project started and funded called the ELISA project. And ELISA is Mata's great-grandmother. And ELISA is not 
the largest possible problem of domain for solving and not the deepest in terms of sophistication, but a big step. And so we've used ELISA, which stands for Adaptive Learning Image and Signal Analysis. Adaptive Learning Image and Signal Analysis. We have used that machine in biomedical applications, in weapons and defense security applications, and in anthropological applications, and in pharmaceutical applications, and in microscopy applications. The question now is, which you're dying to see, is when does this line, you know which line I'm talking about? When does this line meet this line? Because that's when we're going to be there, right? So let's go. Um, so those, this is when we can expect it to be an adult. But what we're really interested in is when will Mata be born? When can we turn her on? And then as technology keeps up with it, continue to add memory onto it and keep teaching her and having her learn through experience. And that will happen in about 2024. That's 12 years away. And we are right on schedule, both software and hardware. Right on schedule. Oh. <laughs>